volatility is starting to pick up rapidly and there is a chance that it can get even worse. So right now, it's extremely important for investors to understand how to hedge against this volatility. And more importantly, figure out which investments can protect their portfolio against severe downside risk. And there's one ETF in particular that has truly amazed me and is in my opinion, one of the best for this situation. So let me explain. On Thursday, April 4th, the markets took a very drastic turn midday, with the Nasdaq 100 falling by more than 2.6% from its midday highs, and the S&P 500 falling more than 2%. This reversal was one of the worst that we've seen in a while. Now, what's even crazier is that the volatility index skyrocketed more than 23% from midday trading, and we haven't seen such a rapid spike in several months. And this all came as a result of comments made by members of the Federal Reserve voicing their concerns over inflation more specifically housing inflation and why it poses a major problem, and that they may be reluctant to start lowering rates. But while watching the markets take this massive turn and literally watching every single minute of it, I paid very close attention to one ETF that managed to cap its overall downside to only 0.6% for the day, so falling 1% from its highs. And what's even more impressive is that the ETF holds a majority of the same stocks as the S&P 500, but with less diversification, so it's not a value ETF. Value investments like SCHD took just as big of a hit as the overall market, falling 1.7% from its highs. And this all ties back to my concerns over the downward pressure of high interest rates on value investments. If 10-year treasuries continue to rise like they have, then dividend ETFs like SCHD will suffer added downside pressure that many other defensive ETFs won't experience, and that is simply because conservative investors can find higher yields in fixed income investments without taking on any risk. Now, looking at this chart, you can see that the ETF captured less than 40% of the S&P 500 drop, mitigating risk extremely well, but also managing to recover very well. And it's the recovery that really amazed me. This ETF's ability to smooth out volatility is simply beautiful. So during times like this, it can either be a core holding for conservative investors or a primary tool to rotate portfolios in order to minimize downside risk. And I definitely think that this is a powerful tool. And this brings me to HELO, which is the JP Morgan Hedged Equity Laddered Overlay ETF. Now, if you find these videos helpful, just do me a little favor and hit that thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm. I'd appreciate it so very much. Thank you guys, let's move on. Now, I reviewed the CTF not too long ago, but we never got to see how it performs during such extreme market swings. And on top of that, I wanna break down how options can be used to hedge a portfolio. So when it comes to risk mitigation, this ETF is definitely a step above high income ETFs. And most importantly, it is one of the only tech focused ETFs that provides investors with very strong risk aversion combined with strong growth properties, which has me extremely intrigued. Now, JEPQ and SPYI are other tech focused high income ETFs that mitigate the risk of big tech investments using options. But HELO is a step above their risk mitigating properties. And for those who don't know, JEPQ and SPYI use a covered call strategy on the Nasdaq 100 and the S&P 500 respectively, a company with their own set of rules and filters, which enables them to provide extremely high dividend yields of 9% and 11% along with growth ability. And the most important part is that this can be an investment alternative to the QQQ and the S&P 500 for those that want to mitigate their portfolio risk but still maintain strong exposure to the upside. But this may still simply be too volatile. Looking at the ETF's performance on April 4th, it still captured almost the entire fall of the Nasdaq 100, losing 2.1% from its highs. And on that same day, SPYI still fell by 1.7% from its highs as well. So you have to remember that covered call strategies cushion the downside with income, it doesn't restrict it in any way. And this is where HELO comes in. I think that this ETF will shine in the next few months as volatility could likely pick up very quickly, especially in October as investors have already priced in much higher volatility. But we'll talk about this in another video. Now, I do wanna remind you guys that the platform that I use throughout this video for research and analysis is Seeking Alpha. And currently you can get $50 off their premium plan by using the link in the description down below. Now back to the video. Now, the beauty of HELO is all in its strategy. It is a pure option strategy that is able to mitigate downside volatility extremely well. And it's a step above high income ETFs because it compresses both sides of price volatility to almost seem like a flat line. This chart compares the QQQ, SPY, JEPQ, and HELO. And just focusing on their one month performance, you can see how powerful the ETF is. So with markets showing growing signs of a pullback, rotating into HLO can give investors that peace of mind.
Now, overall, I feel that there's a lot of mystery and uncertainty surrounding options, as many of you guys in the comments section have told me. So today I wanna break that barrier by explaining these strategies in detail and with examples. So to begin, let's run through the fundamentals of this ETF, mainly for those who haven't seen my previous video so that you can get a thorough understanding before moving forward. This ETF is very new and it was established on September 28th, 2023. The fund currently has $400 million of assets under management, which is more than two times the AUM from just two months ago. So it has an incredible rate of growth. Now, given the fund's recent inception, there really isn't much technicals to look into like beta, but given the fund's performance, I assume it is well below 0.6. So similar to Jeppy, if not better. The fund does have an expense ratio of 0.5%, which is on the higher end, but the reason for this high expense ratio is all due to its underlying strategy. So let's get to the main question. How does this fund work and why is it one of the strongest hedges in today's market? Taking a look at the fund's prospectus, it states that HELO actively manages a large cap US equity portfolio with a laddered options overlay that seeks to provide downside protection while foregoing some upside potential. The fund aims for enhanced risk-adjusted returns over a full market cycle with lower volatility than traditional equity strategies. Okay, so I know that that was quite a lot, but the key thing to focus on is the laddered options overlay. So the fund's asset allocation is identical to the S&P 500. However, you can see that the fund only holds 179 individual stocks as opposed to 500. And I feel that with fewer individual holdings, the fund has a better ability to appreciate in value as it won't suffer from over diversification, which will put a drag on its growth potential. So now what does laddered options overlay mean? Let's break down the description piece by piece so that you can get a thorough understanding because it is not as complex as it sounds. And then you'll understand why this strategy can be perfect for current market conditions. So first, the fund seeks to provide capital appreciation by investing in large cap US stocks, as mentioned. But then the fund looks to provide continuous market hedge by using a put spread collar. And a put spread collar is made up of two components. First, the put spread and then the collar. Now, this is where I feel the confusion begins. A put spread is when an investor buys a put option and then simultaneously sells a put option. So think of this as the part that restricts downside swings. And this is what we're looking for right now. And these put options also have different strike prices. So what this fund does is it purchases a put option that is out of the money, and then it sells a put option that is further out of the money. For example, if the S&P 500 currently sits at $400, a put spread could be buying a put option at a strike price of $390 and selling a put option at a strike price of $380. So think of this section as one piece of the total equation where it is made up of put A and put B. And this entire section simply increases in value as the stocks within the ETF fall in value, therefore cushioning the downside. Simple. Now, each component of this has a price. The $390 put, put A, costs more than the $380 put, put B, because it is closer to the current price of the S&P 500, which is $400 for this example. So put A costs $200 and put B costs $100. Now, because we are buying put A, we pay out of pocket. But because we are selling put B, we are receiving a premium. Therefore, this total equation only costs $100. Simple. So now let's move on to the collar. You see, even if you're doing a put spread, you still have to pay money out of your own pocket to fund the purchase. And unless the underlying stock drops in value, you will lose a lot of money in the long run. However, this fund fixes that problem by selling a call option as well. So just like a covered call ETF, when you sell a call option, you receive a premium. Or to simplify it, a plus B equals C, where C is the premium collected from selling a call. So the premium received is funding the purchase of the put spread. Now think of this part as the restriction on upside volatility. So you see how each component has a specific job and you compare them together to make it complete. But now here's the big twist, laddered options overlay. So what this fund is doing is purchasing these put spread callers, but repeating it a total of three times over multiple three month periods and staggered one month apart. So for example, if my put spread caller expires in January, then the second spread will expire in February and the third spread will expire in March. And what this does is essentially ensure that the hedges are providing continuous protection. And this is extremely important. This is why the fund is able to outperform so significantly at any time there's a big price swing. But there's also another major detail, and that is that the fund is only using a very small portion of its total assets for this laddered put spread collar. 
a large majority of the assets are invested in U.S. large cap stocks and will be able to significantly appreciate in value. Overall, I feel that this ETF has two very specific purposes. It is great for conservative investors who want exposure to the market, but don't want exposure to 100% of the downside volatility, and to help growth investors rotate their portfolios to minimize their losses. And that is all for this one. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye!